Hey guys, what is up? So today I'm going to be telling you guys TV shows that you need to watch. This is part four. I've made three other videos to this series. I made TV shows you need to watch, but I made that in 2020. I made movies you need to watch. I made Disney slash Nickelodeon specific TV shows that you need to watch. If you want to watch the previous three videos of this series, I will link them down below. And yeah, so let's get started. So if you have followed me on Instagram, I've literally spammed the heck out of this show because it is so good and I just want to support it so much. The first show is Abbott Elementary. This show is on ABC. Abbott Elementary is this show that is kind of like the office style mockumentary. It focuses on teachers in a Philadelphia public school system. So it is so funny without like trying too hard to be funny, but it also is so like heartwarming. Like at the end of each episode, there's always kind of some lesson or like, you know, overarching moral and theme. And I am a sucker for those type of shows. I, I love sitcoms that have a message underneath them and that yeah just have a, like a really family friendship uplifting message and it is just the funniest show ever and it is absolutely amazing. The next TV show is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I discovered this I think in 2020 and it is so funny. It is similar to The Office again. I don't know if it's mockumentary style but I feel like it's similar to mockumentary style. They don't have the talking heads but it's a sitcom. It's super funny. It's about this police precinct. They solve crimes and there is drama and every single character is so funny. Yeah, and that one is a great one and that one can be watched on um, NBC and Hulu. The next show I'm pretty sure is exclusively on Hulu. It is The Dropout. This show is crazy. It is inspired by a true story. It basically follows this female self-made billionaire Elizabeth Holmes. And so it just follows her journey of dropping out of Stanford and then creating this company that eventually becomes like a multi-billion dollar company in the technology and medicine field. But unfortunately it was based on lies and she, there was a lot of deceit, a lot of stuff that just was not right that was hurting people. This series is structured kind of like a drama, um, but honestly it's probably kind of like a drama documentary because it's based on a real story. So, so a lot of it is true. It's such an unfortunate story but it's so interesting to watch because you just see this company go from you know just her idea from nothing to like bigger and bigger and bigger and huge and you're just like how did she trick all these people how did it gets so far when it was based on a lot of lies and deceit. So the next kind of network we're gonna be talking about is CW. I have two shows here. So the first one is All American Homecoming. All American is the original show. I mentioned that in one of my previous TV shows you need to watch, such a good show. So All American Homecoming is a spinoff off that show and it follows Simone. Simone is just this girl that is going into her freshman year at HBCU Brinkston University. It follows Simone and just her journey and her her experience at HBCU. It is so good. I'm not gonna lie, when this was airing with All American, because they were airing at the same time, which was just like, uh, uh, so good. I honestly watched All American Homecoming first because I was more excited to watch that. And part of that could be because it's kind of a new show. There's new characters, but also, I mean, it's just, really good. There's drama, there's competition, there's sports rival rivalry, because in All American, the sport that is a big part of the show is football. But then in this show, the two sports are baseball for the boys and tennis for the girls. And um, yeah, that's something that's really awesome that like, all American doesn't have is they don't have a focus on women's sports, whereas, whereas All American Homecoming does have an emphasis on that. But yeah, this show is so good. It's so juicy. The drama is so good and you just get invested in all the characters and it's just so good. So the next show is Naomi and this show was created, co-created by Ava DuVernay. Yeah, so it just follows Naomi who is a black girl and she discovers that she has superpowers, but then she also, you know, is dealing with high school and figuring life out. This show is a mixture of a superhero, supernatural, slash a teen drama, coming of age type vibe. And yeah, just her life completely changes and she has to kind of figure that out um, and fight enemies and all these things. Oh, and she also skateboards, which is awesome. And it was just so cool. Like all the skateboard scenes, I was just like, yes, yes, representation. So the next show is on Peacock and it is Bel Air. This show, it's so good, but yeah, Bel Air is a reboot off the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I actually have not watched the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, so I don't really know too much of the history of that, but I'm pretty sure it was like a sitcom, but it was much more funny and lighthearted. But Bel Air is much more serious and it's a drama. 
I don't know what it is. I mean, I love sitcoms, but I also am a, such a sucker for dramas. And Bel Air is such a good drama. But yeah, so it follows Will Smith. So basically he was living in Philadelphia and then his life kind of gets in danger. So his, his mom decides to send him to his aunt in Bel Air and her family so that he can stay safe. And so he goes to Bel Air and it is such a culture shock because Bel Air is the richity rich of the rich. It, you know, it like mansions, all these things. And so the family he's staying with has this gorgeous house. They have a pool, like, I mean, they are rich right and so it's a huge culture shock for him and he has to adjust and then there's kind of some tensions between him and Carlton which is the son of the family he's staying with and there's Coco Jones in it so if you like Coco Jones she's in it as Hillary yeah it's really really good it's such a good teen drama and kind of similar to All-American I think if you like All-American you'll really like Bel Air because with All-American it's similar you know Spencer comes from Crenshaw and then he goes to Beverly Hills but yeah it's really interesting because you just have him having to navigate this new world, but also try to stay true to his roots. So the next platform is Disney Plus, and the first show is Big Shot. This is such a good show, and I don't hear many people talking about it, but it literally has John Stamos as like the main character. This show follows Marvin Korn, who's played by John Stamos, and he is a basketball coach. But the thing is, is that he got fired because he had a meltdown at one of the games and threw a chair at a ref. But yeah, so he has a really hard time finding a job after that until his agent has a job for him at a California private girls school as a basketball coach for their team. That is D3 <laughs> and not even D2, not even D1. Um, but yeah, so he goes to coach over there, but he kind of has some difficulties because he's never coached high school girls before. But yeah, so this show is really, really interesting because it follows Marvin Korn, but then it also follows the girls on the team. And it's kind of like a teen drama in that way, but um, even more of a team drama, if you will, because with their problems and drama and stuff, it's mostly about how can we beat the next team? How can we get better? How can we do this rather than like friendship fights and stuff like that? Um, so that's really refreshing, really interesting. But also follows Marvin's daughter, who she recently comes to live with Marvin because her mom gets a job in another country. And but yeah, so it kind of explores that relationship and how it grows because Marvin in the past hasn't been that present in her life. Something that's also really interesting with this show is that usually with a lot of Disney shows, they focus mo mainly on the kids' storylines and not the adult parent storylines. But with this show, it really is kind of an even mix of both. Um, so yeah, it's a really great family show great for people of all ages okay so the next show is WandaVision oh this show is so good it is one of my favorite shows of all time and I'm not really too much of a Marvel person I've definitely gotten more into it specifically because of WandaVision I'm not really gonna explain the show too much because I don't want to spoil things but you start off with Wanda and her husband Vision they are in a like I think it starts in the 1940s kind of sitcom. And what's really cool with the show is that each episode is inspired by a different decade of TV. So you have like, um, I'm pretty sure they had, they had 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. And it is so, so cool. And especially if you love TV, it is just so cool to see all the different styles and genres incorporated into it. But yeah, this show was so interesting because you really are just put in the dark and you know absolutely nothing like you you don't know what's going on but slowly episode through episode you figure out what's going on it is an experience that is so interesting so fun and yeah it's kind of like a sci-fi drama adventure crazy mystery just so good highly would recommend even if you're not into marvel super good Okay, so the next show is Moon Knight. This is also a Marvel TV show, and I went into this blind as well. I have never heard of Moon Knight before this. Moon Knight also has a similar vibe to WandaVision in the sense that you have the first episode and you have no idea what's going on, you're put into the dark, but then episode through episode, you slowly figure out what's going on. This is a like action, adventure, superhero type show. The thing that really hooked me onto it at first was the concept of him having this sleeping disorder where he can't really tell 
the difference between his dreams and real life. I am so interested in dreams and just that kind of concept in itself, but then also in a TV show and like as a superpower. So that really intrigued me into the show. But yeah, it's really interesting, really fun, just a very adventurous show. And you don't really need to know too much about like the Marvel universe to watch it because it's kind of removed from that. It's kind of like its own thing. So the next show is a French Disney show, I think, but they have English audio dubs and stuff. And it's called Parallels. This is a sci-fi drama type show. There's four kids that they are celebrating one of the kids' birthdays, and then something really strange happens. If you don't care about spoilers, just a little minor one. What happens is that the kids are kind of sent to different parallel universes. So some of them stay in the same universe, but then some of them go to a different one. And then, um, yeah, pretty much the rest of the series is them trying to find their way back to the original one. So the next category is Netflix. And the first show I have for you guys is The Society. This show is kind of like a Lord of the Flies type vibe. Basically, there's these kids, high school kids, that they are going on a field trip to like the mountains or whatever. But then something really weird happens. Like this huge storm comes out of nowhere. So then the buses go back home and no one's there. And so yeah, so this show kind of just follows these kids and like what they do. And so like the supermarkets all stocked and like they have the hospitals open and stuff. So they have kind of like everything that they need, but they just don't know where everyone else is. So the show kind of follows them trying to figure out what's happening and also trying to figure out like who should be the leader? How should we divide food? How should we do this? How should we do that? It has kind of like a political vibe undertone to it because you have kind of different people trying to get past power and ways of getting that power and how they think that things should be run. But yeah, so this is kind of like a sci-fi kind of dystopia. What do people do when there's no like authority? You know, when there's no adults, when there's no police, there's no like government, they have to just kind of make their own. But yeah, it's a really interesting show. So the next show is Manifest. This show is really, really interesting. It's a mixture of a drama slash sci-fi. Basically this family, they go to, I forget where they go, like Aruba or something, they go on a trip and then they fly back. But then they had one of those situations where the flight was overbooked. So they said that they got, you know, a couple people to go on this other flight, they would get compensation. So a few of the family members decide to go on that flight and then the other ones go on their original flight. But the thing that's really weird that happens, one group lands and the other group doesn't for like many, many years. And so then what happens is that when they finally do land this other group, they're the same age as when they left, but then other family members are much older. But yeah, so one part of it that's like super, super interesting to me is that they have twins in this family. So one of the twins goes on the plane that gets lost for a few years and the other twin doesn't go on that plane. So basically what happens is that one twin is still that age of kind of like, you know, nine, 10, but the other twin is like a teenager. Yeah, some weird stuff kind of goes on and I'm just trying to figure out what happened? How did this happen to us? Can we fix this? Dangers come, evils come, more crazy stuff happens. Um, but it's really interesting and it really keeps you on the edge of your seat. The next show is Dash and Lily. This show has such a special place in my heart. But yeah, Dash and Lily is this rom-com type show and it is so good. Just the main concept is so interesting and like so unique, I've never heard about it before. And also Dash and Lily is like a Chris, like Christmas in New York like type vibe. But yeah, so basically it follows Lily and Dash. So basically Lily decides to kind of write this like notebook game and so she places it in the store. So Dash goes into the bookstore and ends up finding her notebook and ends up wanting to play the little notebook game that she has. And so he writes back and follows the little um, directions that she told him to do and then he places the book back and then she writes back into it. So it's kind of like a little game pen pals from com type vibe. So the next show is Fate the Wink Saga. This is not like the best show, but it's a show that I have rewatched, if that makes sense. So basically it's based off the Winx Club, I think like Nick TV show, that was a cartoon. I haven't watched that, but yeah, it was just a little fairy cartoon. So basically it follows these fairies. You have your main character, Bloom, who she's an American, but then she finds out that she's a fairy and she gets sent to this like fairy school um, and then her parents don't know or anything. Yeah, so she goes to boarding school, but then it's really fairy school. And then, yeah, so it just kind of follows her like navigating this new life. But yeah, basically it is this like fairy teen drama, supernatural 
kind of show. So the next shirt was Get Even, and so this takes place in like a private school, prep school type vibe. Basically follows these high school girls in this private school. Basically what happens is like there's a murder that happens, so it's kind of like a murder mystery type vibe, and they're trying to figure out like what happened because it was one of the high school kids yeah the show just kind of follows these girls trying to figure out who it is but yeah if you want like a murder mystery slash teen drama type vibe this is the show for you the next show is Colin in black and white this show was also created by Ava DuVernay and Colin Kaepernick so this show is kind of like a teen drama coming of age slash documentary kind of show. It focuses on Colin, who's a mixed high school kid and who is just trying to advance in his football career and eventually get to the NFL. Yeah, so it's interesting because it follows that journey, but then it also follows him growing up being mixed race and having two white parents. But yeah, so this show is really good. It talks about a lot of important issues and yeah, I don't know. I just think it's like a really sweet, wholesome, coming of age type of show about growing up mixed and believing in yourself. So the next show is Zero Chill. This is similar to Fate the Wink Saga in the sense that like, it's not the best, but I still will rewatch it because I like watching it. So this show follows twins. You have Mac and you have Kayla. Mac is a hockey player and Kayla is a figure skater. And so they, it, it doesn't make sense, but they're from Canada, but then they move to England because there's like a better opportunity there. Mac gets an offer to play for this team that is run by a former NHL player. Yeah, so it just kind of follows his journey, you know, being in a new place, adjusting to a new environment and like a new team. And then you have Kayla, she's a partner's figure skater, but her partner is in Canada, so she has to leave him. It kind of follows her just kind of dealing with like her whole family moved just because of her brother and she feels like her dreams aren't as important as her brother's and so she has to deal with that and also find a new partner to figure skate with. But yeah, it's really good. I don't know, it has, you know, sibling relationships, as teen drama, like really coming of age, wholesome. So the next show is The Babysitter's Club. So this show follows the characters of the Babysitter Club books. I've never actually read these books, but if you are familiar with them, pretty sure that like it's inspired by these characters. But yeah, it follows these four girls who, um, decide that they want to make some money and so they start this club and um yeah it's a really good show it's you know middle school coming of age a friendship centric show and yeah it's so wholesome and it deals with you know really important issues family stuff and all these other things um and yeah it's a really good show but yeah it's kind of like disney channel drama type vibe if you liked like andy mac or i guess yeah most disney channel shows i think you'd like this one so the next platform is hbo max and it is this show DMC. This show is crazy. Like this show is crazy. This is very similar to the society because what happens is that in the show there was a civil war in America again and then there's this demilitarized zone, the DMC. So the people in that there's no government, there's no authority. So yes, yeah, so they have to like create their own systems, create their own government and all that stuff. But there's kind of no like real rules because there's no official US government and authority. And so it kind of becomes very crazy and you have multiple different sections with power in different ways, but then you have like a lot of corrupt leaders. So it follows Alma who her and her son were in the DMZ area and they get separated and you can't just like freely go in there. It's, you know, there's just a lot of like political tensions and a lot of complications. And so she hasn't seen her son for like five, eight years and she decides that she wants to find him. And so she decides she's gonna go into the DMC. It kind of is like this apocalyptic type vibe, like dystopia because things are free reign. There's not really many consequences. People become desperate for food and power and all these things. And so um, you have to be very careful. And yeah, there's a lot of plot twists and it's, it's so good it's so interesting a lot of like political commentary what lengths do people go when resources are taken away from them when um there's not like authority so yeah it's very similar to the society but kind of on a even crazier scale because there are a lot more people so the last show is on apple tv and it is actually the most recent show i've watched and it is so good it is called severance severance is crazy like it's crazy but it's so good. It's kind of this commentary on the work-life balance and yeah, it kind of criticizes corporate structure and it's like a corporate like horror kind of vibe. Yeah, I'd say it's like a thriller, sci-fi, mystery, dystopia type vibe. There's this company, Lumen, that they've figured out how to surgically separate someone's brain so that they have 
a work life persona, if you will, and then like like home life persona. It follows the main character, Mark, and so he, you know, wakes up, he goes to work, and he goes, like, ugh. another thing with the show is like, it's so visually like satisfying and like creepy, but sci-fi and mm, it's really good. And so the thing is, is that their work selves and their home selves have no recollection of each other. So he goes into work, he goes on this elevator, becomes his work self, and he has no idea what his, they call it, his Audi does, who he is, like, you know, anything about him. Um, he only knows his any life, which is only in this work on this separate floor. It's really interesting because it follows that. It follows both the any self and the work and then the Audi self. The show itself um, has people that are questioning the morality of this procedure. Is it moral to completely have a part of yourself only doing work and not know who the outer self is? And yeah, it's really interesting. The like opening sequence, like title sequence, is the coolest, eeriest thing ever. The music, the music is so, like, oh, it's so good. But yeah, so that is it for my recommendations. I hope that I helped you find a new show to watch and that if you do watch it, that you really, really like it. But yeah, that is it. I will see you guys in my next video.